So the camera's rolling. And now I want to go and grab some uh, single frames. Let's see. Uh, auto capture. I want to capture to the desktop. I want to capture PNGs. I want to capture one every, say, Thirty seconds, and for the heck of it, five hundred of them. Apply, go, and let's start capturing images. Auto capture. Ah. So time to make one more jump down to ninety on the white point. and let it capture a few more. This is looking very nice. I'm trying to remember what the F ratio was on that 14 inch plane wave. I think it's like F7 or something like that. Uh, would, this this camera would really look work well in that scope, that 32 inch. Well, one more in the stack. There it is, and I'm gonna do a. Oh, I gotta I gotta stop the capture, and I can grab a snapshot. And there's the snapshot, and I'm going to go ahead and do a range adjust. And save that. Process range. Fifteen and let's go down to a hundred. There's a couple of satellites going through the field. You can see them at the bottom. So that, if that was five second exposures and there was a hundred or so in the stack, then you're talking about 500 seconds, you're talking about nine minutes total time. It'll be interesting to see how well uh, an Altaz scope like the uh, Evolution 8 I'll be using at the Grand Canyon will work with this system. Let's go back to the live. There's the live right now. Maybe I'll try something else now. Let me... Uh, Okay. Well, glad to see you, Carl. Hope you're feeling okay. Okay, let's center on the flame and then let's slow to and center. Telescope slewing to target. I'm going to stop the stack. Telescope slew complete. Okay, let me just move it over a little bit to the side. How 
come east is not east and west are not running? Let's see. It just reversed east and west. But you're getting a glare from Allen attack. I hate that. Maybe if I can get Allen attack far, far enough out of the field of view, it won't be as bad. Uh, it's, probably, it's right at the edge. Move it a little bit further to the left. I'm going to leave it right there and let me start the stack. Okay. Hey, Dewey. <laughs> Thanks, Dewey. I'm starting with the uh, the white point at 240. I'm going to let it get about 15, 20 in the stack. Oh, I gotta go back to grabbing images. Capture. Back to auto capture. Yeah, I gotta post a few pictures I took this afternoon. Uh, luckily, when uh, my neighbor and his uh, his partner. Uh, lifted the scope up and get it, got it back up in place. It looked like it kept its collimation. Because I didn't touch the collimation. I didn't even do an alignment. When I went to the sun today before noon, uh, the sun fell right in the field of view of the Lunt. And when I shut it down and went back on three hours later with the sun now in the Western Hemisphere and did a go-to, it put the sun in, in the eyepiece again. So I didn't even, I haven't played with the Pole Master. I haven't played with uh, the collimation. Yeah, I just left it as is. I'm going to drop it down to 210 and put some in the stack. What's Rusty on right now? Good hey, evening, Steve. Glad to see you on. Okay. See when you get back, Dewey. I was literally falling asleep this evening and didn't at really feel like coming out, but I knew it was going to be clear and this would be the last clear night that I'd have for a while, so <laughs> decided to stick it out. So I got about 10 more in the stack, so let me go down to 180. Okay. One of these days I'm going to have to take some new darks.
Yeah, Jeff, Carl that was on before. Carl, uh, I met him at Chief on Astronomy Village. He was working with Mike Zamet of Star Structure, working on building those Star Structure dubs. Uh, he went out to Lowell with Mike when they delivered the 32 inch to the Godo facility. He has a 22 inch star structure, I think it was. It, it probably had some of the best optics and the best tracking of a, of a go-to dive that I've ever seen. Because I just bumped it down to uh, 150. Wait till it gets to about 50, then I'll bump it down to 120. I don't remember seeing all of those stars to the right of the dark lane in the middle of the flame before. It yeah, definitely helps. Yeah, you'll, you get it level and then uh, Carl's had a servo cat on it like mine did. Uh, I think he was using an Argo Navis like I have. Uh, Mickey has the the same tracking system, but he's using the uh, Nexus, uh, the brains for the scope. It's like a, a modern day uh, servo cat, uh, not servo cat, but uh, Argo Navis. I mean, the dog was really a, a, a treat to use. You would set the thing vertically, just turn it on, then aim at two stars, and then it was aligned. And go to a target, and it would track it almost perfectly. I'd usually pick a Polaris and then a star in the low in the east, and it was bang on all night long. I think it's time for one more jump down to about 90. It's with the advantage of having short exposure times. It adds to the stack really quickly. Go-tos with that uh, servo cat system were fairly quick. Evening, Rick. Glad you could join in. Um, right now I'm live stacking a five second exposure so I got about 65 in the stack and I've just been lowering the white point from 240 and I'm down to 90 right now. I'm recording a screen capture video and I'm also having the software capture an image every 30 seconds and stick it in a folder. So right now I have 13 pictures in the uh, in the stack. I'll show you a picture from earlier. This was the the, the running man just before uh, we went to the uh, flame. And I'm going to show you how I tweaked the image to get get it to look like that. Evening, Don. So now I'm going to stop the auto capture. Do a snapshot grab and then go to process, range, and then I'm going to raise the black to around 10 and lower the white to about 100. Okay, so there is a five second flame. A stack of about 80 of them. That's pretty beautiful. <laughs> I 
I was telling the, the people that were in earlier that I had just gotten the system back up and running. I had replaced the lifting columns with heavier columns. Uh, Rick, I think Dewey left to drive one of his sons to a friend's around the corner from the house, and he'll be back shortly. But that's that's not a bad. And Allen attack being as close as it is, right outside the field of view, it's it's not bad at all. Let me go back to the live one. There's the live one. I'm going to stop the stacking. And that that is a five second raw. Let me go to the horse. Telescopes flew into target. I mean, it's not that far away. <laughs> Telescope slew complete. And there's the horse. Let me move it a little bit to the left. Okay. So now let me start. Let me raise the white again to start. I'm going to start at about 240 like I did last time. Hmm. I may have to. Maybe I will change the gamma. Maybe I'll go to one point. Two. See what that does. That's gamma 1.2, so let me change that. Okay, so gamma is 1.2, and where, oh, where? Let me see, let me start the live stacking. Okay, now we're gonna start the live stack. So we're still at five seconds, we're still at 40 gain. I just lowered the gamma. You can lightly see the horse horse's silhouette, but as images average into the stack, then I'm gonna start lowering the white point and the horse will start popping out. Yeah, Dewey's going to be back shortly. Evening, Matt. Working on the, the seahorse nebula. Evening, Graham. Yeah, this is first light with the the re reconstructed system. Yeah, yes, it does, Rick. I was starting with the the four three two C tech that I had, but it was a new camera because I had sold uh, Matt mine, and I didn't have a chance to take darks. So I decided to just quickly switch over to the 10C tech since I already had darks that I have taken within the last year and decided to uh, apply one of the older darks and go, go to town with it. Matt, as I told people earlier, I didn't even have to do a polar alignment. Uh, when I went to the sun about 11 o'clock and did a go-to, it was right in the eyepiece of, of the, the Lunt. Not perfectly centered, but better than it had been in the past. Shut it down three hours later, I did another go to the sun, now it was in the west and it was in the eyepiece also. So I haven't even tried the pole master yet. So now let me lower the white point down to 210. 
Now it's going down to 210. So tomorrow, well, it's supposed to start some bad weather tomorrow. That's why I decided to come out tonight. Uh, I may try to uh, gather some darks tomorrow to have them ready. You can see by lowering the, the white, the horse is starting to come out a little bit better. When I get to about 35 in the stack, then I will uh, lower the white some more. Our bad weather's it was supposed to have rain coming in tomorrow and it's not supposed to be good for observing again until Thursday. And by that time we're gonna have a what about a four day old moon in the sky? better I can see a little gap yeah I see it now I think with the next bump in the white it's gonna start popping out a little bit better let me get down to 180 so I'm at 180 now oh let me go back auto capture I keep forgetting to restart the auto capture after I do a snapshot Matt, this is from earlier. That was the flame which was right before the horse head. That was about 100 in the stack, averaged. And then tweaked using the range function in uh, the options. And then before, the first object I did was the running man. Yeah, that one came out pretty nice also. <laughs> the only thing I adjusted was the white point on the histogram. I kept the, everything the same except the white point. So it's time to lower the white point down to 150. You can see what I'm doing. You can watch the, the histogram. I'm, I started at 240, then I went to 210, 180, and now I'm at 150. Could have started with a little bit hot, longer exposure to, to have it a little bit more visible before I tweak it. But so when I get to about 60, I'll drop it down to 120. I don't know if I think Jeff was were you the first one to do the white point slide? I thought so, yeah, that, that, that really works well. I'm hoping I can use the same technique with an Altaz scope at the, <laughs> the Jeff method <laughs> at the Grand Canyon this coming summer. My guardian angel called me today while I was out in the observatory dur during some solar observing. Uh, Jim from Canyon of the Eagles, uh, he was asking if I was still interested in helping him out at the observatory for the total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, and I said yes. 
He says, because they've already so booked out every room in the lodge. And before they started filling up the trailer, uh, the campgrounds, he wanted me to, to know if I wanted to go. And I said, yep, give me 10, 10 days centered on the eclipse and, and Sky and I will be there. So <laughs> we'll be there. Hopefully it's clear weather. Welcome back, Dewey. Yep. That's going to be uh, near Burnett, Texas, uh, which is about an hour northwest of Austin, right on Lake Buchanan. Uh, center line of the eclipse is w right in the middle of the lake, so I'd say we're within a mile of the center line. It's, it's four plus minutes of totality there. I told them they have a, a big roll-off roof observatory. It actually splits in the middle, and each half of the roof rolls north and south. And I said I'd bring my projector, my screen, my cameras, my my solar scopes, and project the image onto the sc screen underneath one of the the roll-off roofs. Let me go one more bump down to 90. Oh, too far, 80. 90. And I might be able to get, yeah, I might be able, be able to make one more bump down to 60 on this one. I mean, it's starting to look really nice. Don't tell me we have mosquitoes here already. That's unbelievable. God. <sighs> mosquitoes in January. Yeah, it flew right in front of the screen and I was lucky I could get it. <laughs> One last jump. Let me go down to 60. And let it build to about uh, 100 total. And I'll capture one and uh, snag one and, and tweak it. It's what it looks like. advantage of uh, five seconds is you can stack a bunch of frames fairly quickly. It's so like we're 96 in the average stack, 97 in the average stack. 98. stop the capture, do a snap, and then go back and start back to auto capture. Matt, I have the pole master, but I didn't need to use, I didn't use it yet because, uh, because it was so well aligned, I didn't feel the need to play with it. So this is the alignment after just throwing everything back up on top the, the pier. Let's see. Let's see. So now let's go down. Okay. Well, not bad. <laughs> yep.
Yeah, do I didn't have to play with the collimation or the polar alignment, which to me is amazing. As much as I moved and shifted everything around, I, I, <laughs> yeah, you can see the, uh, that lane in the main coming down, curving through here. So that's, that was the flame. I don't know if you saw the flame earlier, Dewey. And then before the flame was the running man. Oh, okay. Let me see. Am I, am I clipping the... Uh... what everybody's been saying. I might go and try to center on 2023. The blue nebula that's right by the horse. You can see it just under the top left corner where the five second sign is. Let me stop. And let me center. Telescope slew into target. Telescope slew complete. Okay, so now let me... So let me start a new stack. Okay. So this is NGC 2023. Let me put that name on the screen. NGC 2023. December 8th? My lord. <laughs> of course, I, I probably wasn't that far behind. I know I took the, my whole system has been down for about three weeks. I, I think my last observing session was the 19th of December. And then I got that cold. So I didn't do any observing and then I took the mount apart and this is the first observing since getting it all back together. That's some nice structure showing up in 2023 already. I think from here I'm going to go up to M78. So what's the temperature in here tonight? Uh, where's my weather? Weather app. Weather channel. 48 degrees and clear right now. It's supposed to get down to 41. Oh, no. It's supposed to get down to 40 by 6 in the morning. Okay, so now let me drop this down to about 210. 
I think with the uh, Running Man, I might have gone down too far going down the 60. I'm not going to go as far down this time with the white point. But there's a lot of See, that's a lot of detail in the center. Thanks, Rusty. Yeah, we rarely get below freezing. It was, I think, 29 about a week ago, but that winter lasted about two hours. And then it was back above freezing. <laughs> we don't get protracted cold spells here. So, dude, did you get a chance to see uh, Picard yet? Another show I started watching this week was uh, the Project Blue Book second season. Uh, I know that's one of Rock's favorites. Yeah, we visit uh, back in 2005. When the uh, six of us visited New Mexico skies, we took a day trip to Roswell and visited the, the, the museum. And uh, I wanted to call my friend that lives outside of Austin to ask him if he was watching it because he, he was heavy into uh, Roswell lore. So I might just go down to 120 with this. Let me now go down to 150 maybe. There's 150. about uh, 55 and then I'll drop it once more to 120 and that'll be it. See how well this comes out. Five. Let me drop it down to 120. I think that'll be the last one. Let me get the stack to about 65, and I'll do a capture. I had made a list of targets I wanted to go to tonight and I left it in the house.
capture, stop capture, snap, capture, auto capture. Let me go back to the snap. And let's see, process, range. It's not that much on the black point that I can change. that white point a little bit to 125. Man, I've never seen that, um, that amount of structure in uh, 2023 before. Yes, it does, Rick. Okay, let me get back to starting at 240. Let me stop the stacking, and I'm going to go to M78. Telescopes flew into target. Telescope slew complete. Let's go back to... Okay, there's the live view. Which way do I want to move so I can get the... There's that nebula there. Let me shift it a little bit to the left. And maybe up a hair. Let's see, that's that nebula, that's that nebula. Okay, that's where I want to be, I think. And let me start the average stacking. And this is a race, I think. This is M78. You see, NGC 2064 is right here. That is NGC 2064. See if I can pick up that dark nebula. That's that, there's a dark nebula that's right about up in here. Let's see if I can pick it up. Two stars there, there, there. The you know, dark nebula is right about up in here. So, a few more, and then I'm going to go ahead and drop the white point. Let me get to, tw let me get to 20, and then I'll drop the white point.
Evening bomb. I knew who you were. <laughs> Time to drop the white. Let me get down to 210. Let me get my... Uh, What I like is I don't have to use a filter right now. I should put a note up there that there's no filter in use. I'm seeing some sort of structure along here, which may be the edge of the dark nebula. And it's like a little uh, in it. I think it kind of sticks out a little pimple over here. We'll see uh, when I uh, grab a capture later. So now we got looking pretty good. Must have been just a lone mosquito flying by before because I haven't seen any since that one. It's almost time to move the uh, white point again to 150. Okay. Get some bad mosquitoes down here in the south, but I think some of the ones at Rock Star Party were worse than down here. <sighs> He's got that, that marsh just to his, I guess it would be down river, down the St. Lawrence. Uh, And uh, I think there's a natural breeding ground for mosquitoes in that little marshy area. You know, Jeff, some of the worst mosquitoes I ever encountered were in Yosemite National Park at 10,000 feet up in the Tuolumne Meadows. It was like being in Louisiana at 10,000 feet. I walked out by this this lake and I got attacked. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I 
I'm going to do one more tweak to 120. And then grab a snapshot. Okay. I'm starting to see that. Yeah, I'm seeing that little that little bulge. Oh yeah, there it is. It's really sticking out right about here. Is, is there a name on that nebula? NGC 2067 is the, uh, the, the bright nebula that the dark nebula is superimposed on. Good. That's that's what I figured it was, Rusty. It had to be internal refle reflections. Did you try changing the order, like putting the UV filter first and the light pro uh, protection filter second, and then flipping them to see if it made a difference? One more tweak. Okay. Yeah, that little dark nebula is really popping out now. When I get to, uh, let me get to 90. If you like me, Rusty, you save everything, and sooner or later you're going to find a use for everything you have in your junk drawer. Okay, well, it's 90, so let me stop the capture, do a snap, capture, auto capture, and now with the snapshot, let me do a range tweak. Oh, that little dark nebula really pops out now. I'm going to pull the DSS image over and show you what I've been looking at in Sky Tools. So you can see the the dark nebula right here, and it's clear as a bell right over here. That is sweet. It really is. So I click. So let me stop the stack. Let me go back to 240. And what's the next target going to be? Where's my list besides inside the house? Oh, golly. Okay. 
Where's I have a list in Sky Tools, I think. Not yet, Dewey. There, I managed to break it, and uh, Greg is working on a new release. Uh, Diffuse Nebulae. What was the? Uh, what about Thor's helmet? Thor's helmet. I haven't looked at that one in forever. Telescopes flew into target. On for Telescope slew complete. Okay, I'm going to turn the blue lights off now. Okay. It was the Kmart blue light special. Oh. Well, I think Thor's helmet is there. It's just bigger than I thought it would be. Okay, let me move it to the maybe down a hair. I can see the shape already. Maybe I will stop and go with a slightly longer exposure. Let me see. Okay, stop. Let me go to seven seconds and loop. So let me change this to oh, text. Okay, so now let me Oh, I know I'm going uh, to do, 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 do. let me do the uh let me go back to gamma 1.3 Let me change that to gamma 1.3 bump the black to about 40 maybe 45 okay and now let me start snacking okay yeah Matt you're never gonna have too many telescopes The next 16, Omar's got one on order. Omar got, he took delivery on uh, my two old lifting columns. He got those and I just, he bought a, a 432C. I just sent him a uh, universe focal reducer and spacer and a Richie Cretion 0.75 focal reducer. And he was able to get the uh, the 16 inch rich accretion, I think, from High Point Scientific.
we got lucky doing the uh, the price on shipping the price on the scopes everything went through the roof and I think rock canceled all of uh, his orders for for telescopes it was just gonna be too too expensive to get them Yep, you're right. We got us just at the right time. Hopefully everybody can see the Thor's helmet so far. I'm seeing the... Um, I'm seeing the one curve come up here and I'm seeing the... of the helmet here with the inner arch through here so now we got 16 in the stack almost time to raise the low of the white point so let's see Everything is working really nicely tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know Rock did say, say he was going to have the star party at his place again. And that if they found out that the giant tiger light was inadvertently turned on. Told him somebody needs to just pull the breaker and eliminate it so they can't turn it on. You're seeing the multiple colors. Yeah, I'm not going to make it this summer because we're going to the Grand Canyon. And we're going to try to hit uh, stuff a little bit further north and west of the canyon before the star party. Like maybe make uh, Devil's Tower or uh, Crazy Horse or Yellowstone and then head back to the Grand Canyon for the star party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, def if I'm in that neighborhood again, Matt, I'll definitely stop by. We had a good time visiting with uh, you and Aaron. <laughs> Probably, Jonathan, something like maybe the the Star Vision is a good camera for planetary. Uh, the DS 2.3 Plus uh, is a good one. Um, <laughs> Let me drop this down to 180. HD 10 is also a good one. Uh, I think Matt would agree with that. He just did an article on the HD 10 for Astronomy Technology Today magazine. And the helmet is starting to come out nicely now.
Yeah, the limitation of the HD10 is its, its exposure time and its sensitivity, but it does excel with the solar, lunar, and planetary. If you went deep sky, then the 2.3 would be an all-around good camera. I just sent a camera to the University of Oregon outside of Boise. And they were initially looking at the HD10 versus the star vision. But then they also wanted to do some deep sky, so I, I suggested they look at the uh, DS10C. Uh, only $50 more, and I just shipped them one, and they got it yes, they got it today. So that should be a good addition to their astronomy program. Uh, got a few more in the stack, and then uh, lower the white again. Was the, the tadpole is what IC four ten? Trying to remember. I'm down to one fifty. Well, you can see that inner, it's almost like you can see the eyes. <sighs> Let me, I don't know if the monkey head would fit, would fit in with this scope. It almost looks like There are eyes right here in the helmet. You know, there's the top of the helmet here. Drop it down to 120. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I picked it up at Rock Star Party back in July, and it, it took me a while to get it collimated, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely glad I got it. Ended up selling my 10 inch to, to Matt, and he's loving it. I sold my old lifting columns to Omar. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait till I get to the stack of get to about 70 in the stack, and then I'll do a, a grab, and we'll tweak it a little bit and see what it looks like. I think Dewey has the record with how many telescopes you can put on a mount. I like that 10 inch carbon fiber. I like a solid tube mat because with the pine pollen and oak tree pollen and all, with a closed tube, it helps keep the stuff off the mirror. Uh, but with a, a 16, you're not gonna have a, a solid carbon tube. That's for sure. One more in the stack. I'm going to stop the capture, grab a snap, have it go back to auto capturing, and then let's tweak the snap. Process range. I would have to say that's the best I've ever seen 
Thor's helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me zoom to 100%. Yeah, you get the, the reddish coral at the bottom edge. And even here with the other upper horn, you get the reddish on the edge here also. Yeah, Jeff, thanks for uh, coming up with the, the Jeff method. Okay, what's next on the hit parade, folks? What is the uh, monkey head number? Anybody remember right off the, I can also do a 2175, NGC 2175, let's see, NGC 2175, enter, More object information, it's an open cluster, and let's look at the atlas. There it is. Let me stop the live stacking is stopped. Let me go back to the, okay, there it is there. Let's go to the monkey head and see how much of it I can fit in here. Slew to and center. Telescope slewing to target. Telescope slew complete. is definitely too high. So which part of the monkey head am I looking at? That's the problem. Let's, uh, what I can do is I can stop. I'm going to stop the exposure. I'm going to pop the gain up to max. I'm going to start the loop again and let's see what, what, which way it looks. So I gotta move up, I'm taking it, huh, folks?
Okay. Good night, Rick. Glad you could stop by. So I guess I have to go a little bit further over to the left, huh? the name so which way I got to move it Matt <sighs> I don't think it's going to fit either. Let me let me call up a uh, context viewer. No, it's not going to fit. I'm just going to get a piece of it. Yeah. It's t yeah, it's too big. Um That dark area to the right, is that the by the eyes? Oh Lord. So the head's upside down, right? Wait, I see the Oh, okay. So let me do a flip. I want to, oh, vertical flip. See if that puts the, the monkey. Okay, right above the lettering at the top, that's the uh, the dark lane, I guess, around his forehead. Huh? Yeah, so he's looking to the right. Okay. Let me stop the exposure. Let me go back to the 40 gain. I want to do the tadpoles after this because I had never seen the tadpoles until the broadcast the other night. Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go to 10 seconds. Loop 10 seconds. Okay, so now let me raise the black. Thirty-five, and I'm going to start the stack. So right now I'm centered right about here. Let me do a sync. Telescope synced. synced. Okay. I'm going to start stacking, and this is ten seconds. So. Eraser, eraser. A little bit longer exposure. Let me go outside for a second.
It's not a perfect knife, but take what you can get. Yeah, I guess the next thing to go to after this would be the tadpoles. Because that's real close. Oh no, the flaming star and then the tadpoles. Okay. Oh, the, oh, the crescent. I mean, uh, the, the jellyfish. Yeah. So we got 15 in the stack. Let me lower the uh, white point down to 210. Rust, are you still broadcasting or did you uh, sign off? Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, I didn't take a dark. I used a dark from, I don't know, six months, a year ago, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it is very, very smooth. Oh, yes, Thor's helmet, good. I got to remember to save all of those things before I close the software down tonight. Get a few more in a stack and I'll lower the the white point. I think the tadpole was IC four ten, if memory serves. But after this I'm gonna go to the jellyfish. I was smart, I'd get my electric heater out. Oh, there's the double nebula in Orion. Oh yeah, I forgot about them too. They're all close by. Okay, so let me lower the white point again. I really hope I can do this at the Grand Canyon. You know, grab a snap and then tweak it. But there's lots of structure by the... Uh... Telescope synced. Yeah, I'm synced on that bright star just to the left of center. One more, I'll drop it to 150.
Well, I have to say I'm pleased with the conversion done here in the dome. Everything seems to be working well. Hey Graham, glad you could stop by. I think the uh, that dark lane that's above the head is right up in here. It's just I can't get the whole monkey head in this field of view. See if that's the wife. Yeah, one twenty. Okay, and it was just. Let me send her a message. sent the wife a message <sighs> okay so let me do one more tweak on the 120 and that'll be it for this one let it build up to about 55 and we'll grab a capture I guess that's the chin at the very bottom Fifty-five. That's five hundred and fifty seconds. That's a little bit less than ten minutes of total data time. Not bad. Two more, and I'll grab a snap. One more, and I'll grab a snap. Capture, stop capture, grab a snap, capture, auto capture. Now let's tweak the snap. Night, do I glad you could stop by? Process, range. Let me raise the black. Lower the white. Boy. <laughs> That's not bad. Just need to have a bigger field of view so I can get more of it in there.
pretty. There was, I think, um, 60 or so in the stack. 55, I think, was in the stack. I wish I could. <laughs> Maybe with that new focal reducer that Rock's working on. <laughs> he was trying to get the three or so of them uh, together. He was going to take one home if he had a chance to try it this weekend. And then I'm going to send him an order next week and he'll include one for me. And I think he was going to send you one to test out. So stop the live stack. Raise that to about 240 again. And let's go to the live. There's the live. And let's go off to. Let me go to the jellyfish. Telescopes flew into target. Move into the jellyfish. Telescope slew complete. Yeah, it is. Let's see what part of it I can get. Yes, part of it. to the left a little bit. That didn't go up and to the left a little bit. All of a sudden, it seems like everything's going opposite to where I want it to go. I'm going up now. Let's see what happens with up. Okay, I w that's where I wanted to go. Oh, I know what I did. I did a vertical flip. That's... <sighs> Glad you could uh, join in, Don. Let me flip it back again to flip, vertical flip. And then I got to change that direction again. Okay. So that's 10 seconds. Okay, so let me start the stack. Okay, I'm going to start the stack. See how much of the... Uh, jellyfish I can get in. I think Propus is out of the field at the bottom right. Should, 
Yeah, we should get some of the tentacles coming down. We'll see. It's starting to smooth out already. I mean, we've had a pretty good night so far, you know, starting with the running man. And moving over to the flame. I'm surprised Alan attack didn't really interfere with the flame that much. Then the horse head. NGC 2023 next to the horse head. M78. Thor's helmet. And then the monkey head. And now we're back to the jellyfish. Four more to the stack. Three more to the stack. Two more to the stack. Get to 15 in the stack. Down to 210. So I can get to about 25. Right under the uh, gamma 1.3, you can start seeing nice little breaks in the nebulosity in the jellyfish. So the tentacles moving to the lower right. Jeff, about how many do you normally add to the stack every time you change the white point? Five, ten? What's a good number? I've been doing around 10. Okay. I'm using, I got sharpening, sharpening at 50% right now. Yeah, I, I was at 15 the first time I moved it, but then every subsequent one, you do another 15, 16 every time you jump, or 5 or 10? Yeah, I just added 10 to the, to the, the first one. So I was at 25 when I lowered it to 180. Starting to see nice breaks in the, the nebulosity right at the very top. I wish I had 
dropped it down a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So basically whatever whatever works. <laughs> yeah. I started with about fifteen or twenty and then I've been tweaking it about every ten or so after that. So now I got uh, eight more at 180. I'm going to go two more and then move it to 150. Okay. Yeah, the longer you go, the, the more the noise averages out. I haven't done a white balance since the very first target. Oh well. Go down to 150. So I'm at 36. And then I'll go to 120 at about 45. Yeah. Yeah, these are all listed as diffuse nebulae. drop it to 120 and then oh. yeah, it's getting some nice structure right at the very top center jump down to 120. Okay, let's go to 55 and then grab a snap. Five more. Man, I should sleep well tonight. <sighs> After this, I'm going to go to the double nebula in Orion and then go to the tadpoles. I know the flaming star is not going to fit, but I think I can get the area with the tadpoles in the field of view. Okay, let's 
let's see. Capture, stop capture, snap, capture, auto capture. So let's tweak the yeah, see, process, range. Wow. And look at the structure at the top. I got about half the jellyfish. <laughs> you can see I'm not tracking perfectly. I got that little wedge out at the bottom and on the, on the left side. But the, 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 the detail. go back to stop the live stack. Let me go back to 240. Live. And I'm going to go to the center of the, I'm going to go to the double nebula east and see if I can put it in the center of the field. Telescopes flew into target. Shouldn't be that far away. Telescope slew complete. change the slew speed to something a little bit higher. Let me go to 64 and go east. See if that works. go back to 12x and go west. See if I can get all three nebula in this. Double nebula west, w nebula, double nebula west, east, and then a, a sharpless. So let me a little bit further. Yeah, the, the brightest one is called double nebula west. Let me get it to the near the left edge. The one that's going to be hard to get is the sharpless object, which is to the faintly coming in on the right. Okay, this may be the spot to start. Okay, wait till the next exposure and I'll start stacking. All right. Okay, I 
enable the stacking. Yeah, the Sharpless 2 254 is a large nebulous area. It's like right up in here. And then this is the double nebula east, and this is double nebula west. After this, I'm going to the tadpole. Okay. Let me put the name in. That's west, that's east, and Sharpless is here. It's a nice structure in the, the western one. <laughs> yes, Matt, it is. never known about this target until I saw it in Sky Tools on the chart. So now we got 13 in the stack. Fourteen, one more, and I'll start lowering the white point. Yeah, let me uh, let me lower the white point, and I'll I'll bring over the uh, DSS image. This is the DSS image from Sky Tools. You can see west, east, and then the Sharpless object next to it. West one almost looks like a, a triffid. It's almost got three little pieces, just like the triffid. Have a break here, a break here, and then another break through here. Night, Matt. Glad you could stop by. I'm going to do this and then the tadpole and then probably call it quits for the night. Yeehaw! One more in the stack and I'll lower the point again.
Very nice. Yeah, that sharpless object on the right is starting to show up a little bit better. DSS image shows a dark lane in the sharpless. I'm trying to see if I can pick it out. Uh, I don't see it. And that western one is really looking nice. information, diffuse nebula, action menu, interactive atlas, yep, that's the dead pole, that'll be the next target. stack. Okay, let that build about 55 and we'll grab a snap. Oh, coffee. Mm. Too bad the coffee got warm, I mean got cold. Yeah, some of the uh, sharpless is starting to show up. The DSS image from SkyTool showed a dark rift running in it, and I was trying to pick it up, but I think I see it, but faintly. When I get the uh, snap 
maybe tweaking it all it'll pop out okay who just texted me okay that was the wife okay. two more into this capture and then I'll run a snap one more Capture, stop capture, snap, capture, start capture. Let's do a tweak. Okay, raise the black. Lower the white. I can faintly see, Jeff, there's a little... vein running through there. That shows up in the uh, DSS image. But yeah, that is, uh, that is pretty sweet. <laughs> Well, off to the tadpoles. Let's see. I want to let me see if I can center between the tadpoles. Center view it cursor. Slew to and center at cursor. Telescope slewing to target. Uh-oh, Marian flips. Telescope's slew complete. Dobson's hole right at the top. Okay. Let's see. So, stop the stack, go to live. do is I'm going to stop max gain loop. Let's see if anything shows up. Well, that's too much. <laughs> How about stop half gain? loop <laughs> yeah. 
That ain't gonna work either. How about stop and go back to... Yeah, I'm going for the tadpoles, but... Uh, I'm almost directly at the zenith. I'm still at 10 seconds. So I can't tell where I am relative to the tadpoles. Since I did a meridian flip east and west are now switched so if I go that way so if I remember the tadpoles had a bright reddish head Since I did a meridian flip, that uh, throws all bets off. Let me go to El Nath, which is a star in the corner of... Uh, Telescope slew into target. Oh. Telescope slew complete. complete. Oh well, I have to. Let me go check the finder scope. I think I am yep. let me go see if I can find it go-to is off. Meridian Flip did me in. is El Nath. Oh, God. Yeah, I was off a good bit. So let's see if I can get that star centered. Let me stop and go down to a one second exposure. Once I get this centered, I should be able to get to the tadpoles easier. Okay, there's El Nath.
telescope synced. Okay, now where's the tadpoles? Telescopes flew into target. Okay, let's see. Telescope slew complete. Let's see if we're any better. Turn that off. Let me go back to the 10 second exposure. Loop. I think I see one tadpole. Oh, I see both tadpoles. Yeah, they're both there. Okay. One, two. They're both there. Let's uh, histogram. Let's raise the black point. Well, Bob, it's supposed to rain here tomorrow. That's why I'm out tonight. And I'm going to start with the histogram at 2.40 and 30. I'm going to start the live stack. And this is the tadpoles. I see 4.10. I see four ten. Okay, put it in the middle. Okay, so I think the tadpoles are. One of them's here, and I think the other one is over here. We will see with time if that's what happens. So, I think this is going to be my last object for the night. Like Bob, like I was telling everybody earlier, my last observing session here was on December 19th. And then I got a, a bad cold. Then I started taking my mount apart, changing out the lifting columns, and I just got it back together today. So, that's why I'm out tonight. <sighs> And it's supposed to start raining tomorrow for the next five days. Okay, so we've got 11 in the stack so far. I was telling everybody earlier that I rebuilt the lifting columns, the mount, and the scopes, threw it all up on the here, 
and when I did a solar observing session this morning, the sun ended up right in the field of view of the eyepiece. Three hours later, I went on the other side of the meridian. The sun was in the in, in, in the eyepiece. I didn't even have to do an alignment. I'm pretty darn close to being polar aligned. I just got lucky. <laughs> okay, so I got 17 in the stack. Let me drop the white, white point down about uh, uh, to 10. I think I should have moved those tadpoles over to the right side because the dark nebula I think one of the dark nebulas is right up in here Excuse me, I'm starting to get a little tired. Hi, Jack, uh, Jeff. Glad you could stop by. I'm, all, I'm only going to be on a few minutes longer. Once I get uh, all of the images in this stack, then I'm going to shut it down for the night. Glad you could stop by. Thanks for stopping by, Rusty. I'm glad you were able to, to join in. Yeah, I got about another 10 minutes and I'll be out of here also. I'm glad you could drop by. Have a good evening. Okay, time for another lowering of the white.
few more into the stack. week after this. Let me grab a snapshot, capture, stop capture, snapshot, capture, auto capture, and let's tweak that image. So there are the two tadpoles, yep. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, Bob and guests, I am calling it quits for tonight. I'm glad you were able to stop by. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this again not too long from now. All depends on the weather. But again, thanks for stopping by. Good night for now.